Hello Rade, my name is Uwer and I would like to welcome you back in Dying Light. It has been a while since we've been in this game and there is quite a lot of changes. There is a lot of good news, quite a lot of bad news also, but let's go through all of them. Uh, the first thing to say is that it is the final update, the final update to Dying Light 1. After seven years of development, it has ended, so there will be no more updates it seems. And that's really, really sad. For seven years we had so, so many cool updates, so many cool DLCs, bundles, events, stuff that we could do. There was constantly something new to do in this game, and that was just goddamn amazing. And that is probably one of the reasons why this game is just so amazing. Not only you've got amazing gameplay, amazing story, amazing characters, uh, I'm, I don't know, soundtrack, and so on and so on. There are so many great things about this game, but also the fact that it has been developed to this point, to be just pure perfection after seven years, just got them amazing. Uh, Dying Light 1 is just a game that basically crippled every fucking game that I thought before was my favorite game. Before I really went in and, you know, go and did like two, three, three playthroughs on this channel. Basically crushed everything. Darksiders to Medieval, Alice Mother's Returns, everything. Because like the biggest the biggest point to Dying Light 1 is uh, it's a really, really cool game, but also uh, you cannot really measure the game just by gameplay, graphics that also really hold up very well, uh, character, story, whatever. Also very important stuff is replayability, so ability to replay the game and you know not, not get bored. And there is that, that's really, really amazing in Dying Light, I can play I don't know how many times I've played this game. Eight? Nine? I don't really know. Also, when I'm checking out my statistics at, uh, at Steam and in, in the game, they are kind of confused. They don't know which one is true because in Dying Light, in the game, my personal statistics are showing like 30 more hours than Steam, something like that. Uh, so that's a little bit, a little bit interesting, a little bit annoying. I don't know who, who would I like to believe. But screw that. And, and as I said, it's just really amazing game, and it's sad that we will not be getting anything else. But we are getting the final event. We got the final event because probably I will be, uh, I will be uploading this video after the, the event has ended. Uh, I just didn't have enough time to, to cover that when it was releasing because I had my birthday, I was a little bit of a uh, hiking trip, where I had basically no communication with the, with the outside world. It was really amazing, but I came back and the final update is here. So, <laughs> time to talk about it. This event is called Tolga and Fatim. I was, was called, well, basically, was called Tolga and Fatim event. And the requirements were very simple. You had two bounties, as always. Uh, you've got local and global bounty. Global was quite easy. It was done around three days in. Uh, when, yeah, three days after releasing the, this event, I believe, uh, kill 10 million enemies. <laughs> People, community, whole community did it in, in three days, I believe. <laughs> so that's kind of fucking crazy. Uh, but also, the, very mo the more important one, the more interesting one, is the local bounty. You've got to kill seven enemies. You've got to kill one ghoul, one demolisher, one volatile, five gas tanks, three toads, 15 virus, 20 biters. Don't ask me why you're not killing other enemies, like for example, we've got Bombers, Bolters, Screamers. Is there anything else? I think that's all. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, and don't ask me why we're not killing those three. Mm, but that's just that. Uh, I guess it's so that mm, all the players that are playing the game can earn the reward. It's just fucking amazing. Without going really too crazy into into the game, like farming uh, and so on and so on, like you just to kill one demolisher, uh, you 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 had to do it during the the story, like three times, something like that. Uh, one volatile game never really forced you to kill volatile, but you can do it without too many problems uh, nowadays. So not really that big of a deal. Uh, and after you kill all of those. You are getting blueprint for really fucking amazing weapon. Weapon like no other, basically. 
Uh, that is called Pocket 7. Maybe that Pocket 7 relies a little bit why we had to kill seven enemies, seven types of enemies. I don't really know. But basically, in, in the game, you've got different types of effects that you can apply to enemies. You've got poison, you've got electricity, freeze, you can also get like explosive arrows, you've got different types of grenades, and so on and so on. This weapon combines everything, all of that. So, for example, you can, uh, you can shoot bullet that will uh, explode on impact, or that will electrocute enemies, or that will poison the enemies, or that will freeze the enemies, or it will give enemies, uh, well, group of enemies, more specifically, uh, effects that were only available before from the easter egg weapons that you could find in following and in the main game. So you had super zombie grenade, you had bullet grenade, and stasis bullets, stasis, stasis grenades, whatever they were called. And you've got all of those effects right now available in one weapon. Uh, the only drawback right now is that the weapon only shoots one bullet, and then you've got to reload. But after each reload, you're getting different random effect. So that's really fucking amazing. It's really, really cool to use. Uh, but I don't know. I had that feeling. Uh, probably something wrong with me, because it. It feels like a pistol to use, right? Because of that, most of the times, well, it feels like a pistol, but also is very loud, so it attracts a lot of enemies. Let's put it this way. So most of the times, when I was trying to use it, I was shooting at very close range. And you've got exploding, exploding bullets, for example. And that's not really too good. So yeah, keep that in mind, that if you are using that, you know, keep your distance to the enemies. But also, during this event, they brought back two amazing game modes, game modes, game effects, I don't know how to call them modes, basically. They're always calling them modes. Uh, two modes that community just loved. If you remember Low Gravity Event, it was goddamn amazing. It was released basically at the same time where Astronaut Band was introduced, yeah. Uh, and with that, you had lower gravity. For example, you could jump higher, you were taking no full damage, and if you if you used this this effect, I, not, I, I still don't know how to call it, uh, with the easter egg from Mario World that you are getting, you could just fucking fly. Well, more like glide, uh, but you can do a lot of cool stuff. I remember when this, uh, when this event launched, I was flying around the countryside. I could basically fly through the whole fucking countryside from the Temple of the Sun uh, Eye of the Sun, sorry, Eye of the Sun to the fucking dam in one fucking go. It just got them amazing feeling, especially because when you are at the Eye of the Sun and you are flying, during, well, basically you're just flying, you are basically at the same uh, height as uh, planes that are dropping drops at the countryside. So you could get a really cool view at the, uh, at the plane that drops, drops. Well, uh, and that's, uh, that, is, that just brought a lot of cool memories. And this event basically was very, really, really fucking cool. I really enjoyed that. But I've got one question about the events. Because before, every time we had new event in the game, we had update. So that means, probably, as a, as a, at least that's what I assume, is that they need updates in order to you know, bring in events. Right? That's pretty, pretty, pretty understandable, right? Okay, but what happens if, uh, if you would, for example, like to introduce events that are happening no matter if you do updates or not really? For example, every year during the Christmas, Easter, whatever, Halloween, uh, there is always event going on without you updating the game. Like, couldn't they just do that? You know, every imagine every year during the Christmas you've got the same event. You've got ability to farm the same weapons. Would that be boring? I don't really know. But would, would it be cool to have at least an option to, you know, go back to those cool weapons? I think that would be cool. But screw that. That's the last event. At least they haven't noticed uh, as that there will be something else. They haven't told us that. So screw that. Other than that, with that final update, we also had a lot of balancing, tweaking, buffs, nerfing, and so on and so on to be the zombie mode. I wasn't really too much into that. I have played a little bit, but I'm not really too much of a co-op guy. Uh, I like couch gaming and so on and so on with my friends. 
but connecting with other people not really my kind of kind of kind of gaming uh, but when I was playing it was pretty pretty cool but they did a shit ton of buffing nerfing and so on and so on for example right now they introduced ban list so list of weapons that you cannot take into be the zombie mode and that includes all easter egg weapons or shields and few weapons for the bundles, for example, last wish, inmate rifle, your first range, and dead eye crossbow. Pretty, pretty interesting why they chose exactly those and nothing else, but screw that. Uh, I will probably not be playing in that, in that mode anymore, but that's, that's cool. Also, they like did a lot of like very small tweaking. For example, I remember reading the patch notes and it was saying something like, Zide flares are right now uh, they have shorter duration, stuff like that. So there's a shit ton of tweaking that they done to make this game, you know, a little bit more balanced. Uh, this game a little bit more balanced. So that's really, really interesting. Also, as basically with all the events, we had, we have new bundle. Probably it will be the final bundle, I would assume, because each bundle required uh, update to basically get the files needed for that bundle. And it's a really cool one. It's a really fucking amazing one. It's called Diesel Punk Bundle. And I I enjoyed using it a lot. Uh, let's start off with what are bundles. Bundles are basically small DLCs that are adding you new weapons, new outfits and new buggy paint jobs. Pretty small, uh, pretty cheap and so on and so on, but also pretty cool. New weapons are pretty fucking, are pretty fucking amazing. You've got Gut Render, that is chain Chainsaw that has bleeding effect that is applying on every hit but also it is destroying enemy ar armor and it has very high critical chance uh, because of that you probably will be killing enemies very very fast the only thing that uh, is wrong with this, with this weapon is that it is not stutter stuttering enemies basically it's not stopping their attacks and so on and so on so for example when you're fighting with Goon with it, you're doing a lot of damage to him, but it's not enough damage to take him out. And because of that, he can swing his weapon and attack you. And because of the chainsaw has very limited range, you are. It is very hard to uh, to dodge that attack, basically. But for like small zombies, it's amazing because killing them very very fast. Uh, as I said, I wish that there would be a little bit of stuttering effect, but. Screw that, it's still cool to use. The only thing that you would like to know is that you cannot upgrade this weapon. You are stuck with what the game is giving you. So with the stats that the game is giving you, you cannot upgrade like put king mods and so on and so on. And you've got also craft fuel from that, from chemicals. And you've got to refuel it, a little bit like you are reloading the gun. It's really fucking amazing. Second weapon is called Flesh Reaper and basically like a machete but with spikes on top. And it's also playing mm, mm, bleeding effect is very cool to use. Uh, and upgraded version of it is really fucking amazing. And also with this one, not crafting something from out of thin air and your materials, you are crafting it from your machete or whatever blades, right? So because of that, you can get really powerful weapon as, a, as your base and craft it into something even more powerful with bleeding effect. That is really fucking cool on this weapon. So it has potential to be a really cool weapon if you will spend your time and get good weapons as a base. And also, with the third one, you've got Greaser. That is submachine gun. It's like, okay, I never like submachine guns in the, in the game uh, because they just feel not good enough i don't know how to put it uh, they feel like they are just a little bit underpowered something like that because pistols are doing a lot of damage you've got rifles that are doing a lot of damage and you've got some machine guns that are somewhere in the middle and i don't know i think they are just not scaling well but maybe that that is just me it was cool to use this gun it has really fast fire rate and just cool to use uh, new outfit that they are introducing is Punk Barret and looks cool, but it is not giving any cool effects. Like for example, you had astronaut bundle that would let you astronaut outfit that would let you jump a little bit higher. You had Van Crane bundle, and with that you had Van Crane outfit that had this 
interesting effect that when you throw your weapons, your weapon, it is going back to you. That's like boomerang. Or you had a rust bundle that was giving you outfit that was reducing the damage that you were taking. There was something else that was doing something. But it's sad that the last bundle is not introducing outfit that is giving another effect. I wish they would change that so every outfit would give you something else and I would write that down somewhere because right now we've got to just guess or remember. I wish they would do that, but not really, not, not the case. And also something new, something exciting is that they added new buggy skin, it's called Ragged Roadster, looks cool and so on, but the coolest thing is not the look, the coolest thing is the effect. Because I believe that's the case, never before we had buggy out buggy skin, buggy paint job that was giving you effect on your buggy. It is the first one. It's sad that it's in the last bundle, but it still is here. So if you paint your buggy with that paint job, you're getting 50% slower fuel usage. And it's fucking amazing. I wish that with final update it would just push a lot of new a lot of well not really new outfits, but they would give a lot of more use to the previous outfits and paint job so that it, you would have kind of, uh, you know, you would be, how, how, to, how to fucking put it? Uh, you, would, you would like to use specific paint job or specific outfit for specific situations that you are in or you know that you are getting for going for really hard mission, you know, change your bundle, change your outfit, change your paint job. If you are going for, I don't know, farming run, change the paint job, change the outfit, and so on and so on. I wish they, that, they did that, but not really, not, it hasn't really happened, but still we've got cool new paint job with cool effect. That's that. And that's it, that's it for Diesel Punk Bundle. Nothing else in that one. Uh, other than that, other than updates to be the zombie, new bundle, new event, and a lot of uh, updates to the game, uh, for example, right now, finally, we are going to head right over to the uh, to the Hose Boz Bozak Horde. The game was stripping you out of your inventory. You everything was going to the stash, right? And after that, you had to equip that and so on and so on. It is not happening right now. Right now, it is going to the stash, but you are equipping that when you are going back to the to the store mode, following mode, and so on and so on. It's really fucking amazing. I was, I was really, really annoyed by that, and I'm glad that they fixed that. Uh, it's sad that it happened only at the final update, but still, it's here. And for example, they did a lot of rebalancing with the demolisher fight at the pit when Rice is taking you to, into the pit. For example, the machete over there is uh, has better stats, and there is something, did something else, and so on with that. I have been reading patch notes, but there are like a lot of mm, really small changes that they did that are really cool and but you will probably not really notice that too much in the game but in, in general game should feel a lot more balanced a lot more polished and they fix a lot of like texture glitches and so on and so on so i feel like at the, we are at this point after seven years that this game is just perfection there is nothing else to be had other than things that i'm kind of annoyed with that i'm saying you but also the biggest thing that also a lot of people are annoyed, quite, quite, quite annoyed, very annoyed, <laughs> is that they are upgrading for free every standard edition of the game to enhanced edition of the game. So the standard edition is only story. And like the, like, like the free bundles that you can get, there are a few of them. And you are going it to enhanced edition that has the following DLC, amazing DLC that is like must have for Dying Light 1 fun because you then getting a full story that is later on, for example, they are going back to it in Dying Light 2. It is important to get the following to get the full grasp of the story, right? Uh, you are also getting Cuisine Cargo. I believe that was the first DLC to this game. I'm pretty sure that it was the first DLC to the game. And that was giving you more quarantine zones. Just two more quarantine zones, but more. And quarantine zones are just like dungeons in your every RPG game, but you are just getting to the locations that were the first infected in, the, in Haran were brought there because military thought they could, you know, control the outbreak. 
it didn't really happen. Because of that, they were closed for a really long time. And because of that, they've got a lot of loot, for example, a lot of drops. And quarantine zones are the best way to farm drops if you would like to, you know, get more experience. We are also getting Boza Core. That is cool. Uh, but as I said before, uh, Boza Core and Prison Highs are two DLCs that I kind of understand why they are here, but I kind of wish they were done a little bit different because they are time trials. I hate time trials in the games. Uh, so, but I prefer Boza Core to Prison Highs, that's for sure. Boza Core is really, really cool, and I think it is a little bit cooler when you're doing that in, in co op, but I haven't done it. Uh, so screw that. You're also getting Ultimate Survival Bundle and Crash Test Skin Bundle. I believe they were one of the first bundles. Two first bundles, I believe. And that you were getting. So yeah, that's cool. And why people are mad about that? Because they're getting stuff for free. Well, they are getting stuff for free, but only the people that bought Standard Edition and nothing else, they are getting something for free. Because I would like to remind you that we had few editions of the game. We had Standard Edition, Enhanced Edition. I believe there was something for 5th Anniversary. It was called 5th Anniversary Edition. And we also had Platinum Edition of the game. Other than that, for example, on Steam, you've got quite a lot of like collections, I believe they are called. Like uh, You've got, for example, Ultimate, Colle Ultimate DLC Collection, Ultimate Bundle Collection, something like that. That is uh, giving you opportunity to buy bundles that are a little bit cheaper because you're buying in bulk. Uh, so most of the people already had all of that. Uh, because of that, a lot of people are sad, annoyed and angry because they, someone is saying that they were getting something for free, but they already bought it. So screw that. Basically the same thing happened to me, but I wasn't that annoyed. Uh, I bought a lot of bundles and after that, uh, Platinum Edition of the game came in. And all of them were... Well, Platinum Edition was a really good deal. Because it was giving you a lot, all, all the bundles on the DLCs that happened, that were released before releasing the Platinum Edition. It was a really good deal, but... Yeah, screw that. I, I, I should have waited with those bundles. Screw that. But right now, as I said, people are getting quite angry at Techland for releasing uh, free update, but... Screw that, we are getting something for free. And I'm happy with every edition of the game that I bought. I bought the standard edition, I bought the enhanced edition, and I bought platinum edition. And I bought a lot of bundles in between those. I'm happy with all of those. So, nothing, uh, no... Mm, I feel no need to, to be annoyed at that. Screw that. But yeah, that's the final update. I kind of am thinking about why they went with only this small event at the end like i think at least that's what uh, all the signs of the sky are telling us right now this is the final event this is the final update and so on why there wasn't anything bigger like you know fireworks zombies explosions new stuff thousand new weapons and so on and so on answer a probably there is limited, of guy, limited amount of guys that are working on Nightlight 1 right now. When, well, before I went to beta testing, uh, well, before I was beta testing Nightlight 2, I have heard or read somewhere on the internet that only like 10% of people that work originally on Nightlight 1 is still working on it to, for example, get the bundles, events, updates, and so on and so on, and health rate also. Uh, and since that, quite a lot of time has passed. And I would assume that even less people work right now, work before the final update on Daylight 1. So probably they didn't have enough people to get a lot more done within limited time frame that probably they had uh, figured out uh, that they would like to, for example, release final update, right? So probably they didn't have enough people and time to do it. But still, it is sad. It is sad that we haven't got anything else, anything bigger. But, screw that, nothing, uh, that, nothing can be done about that. I just wish that we had seasonal events that are happening no matter if, the update, uh, if there are updates or to the game or not. For example, like Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, and so on and so on. I wish that we had more effects on our paint jobs and outfits. I wish that we had something else, something more, like 
as I said with the Spike story uh, event, uh, I thought that it would be giving us a lot more stuff to do, a lot of a lot more lore and so on and so on. I thought that would have like Spike story, then after that, uh, Rice story, uh, who else? Lina story, uh, Brecken story, and so on and so on. So giving us a lot more lore, a lot more. Uh, a lot more information about different characters, what they did or what they done after the end of the game. But with Spike's story, we only had, well, stuff that we had to do in the game. And all the other information was released to us through either patch notes or trailers for the event. And I was hoping that there would be, for example, we complete the event, uh, the final Spike story event, part 3, I believe it was called, you would get a message, a radio message from Spike telling you, hey Crane, good job, I'm leaving the town, we'll be trying to find someone else, I will, I'm will. i leading uh, survivors out of here, and I wish you good luck on getting the cure from the countryside. Like, just few words. Give me something in the game that would tell me a little bit more. Or give me a quest about it that you can do no matter if you are doing the event or not. Like after you complete the main game, give me a quest that is basically what the event has done. So help survivors, something like that. Uh, help survivors after that you're getting the message so that you know that even if you haven't heard about the event, if you have, haven't uh, seen the trailers and so on and so on, you are getting information what happened to Spike. And you know that in Dying Light 2 he returns. I wish that, that something like that was done, but not really. Screw that right now. Nothing will change that. I'm just sad. And that's it. There is one more thing also that I would like to talk about, but not in this video, because we are kind of running out of time, and I am still not done with checking out the updates for Hellraid. Because Hellraid, the youngest DLC in Dying Light family, has had the final update also. And right now I'm playing through it and trying to get the, the coolest weapon that they added. Uh, but there's a lot of changes and because of that I also wanted to do it in a separate video. But the weapon that was introduced in the Hellraid, the final update of Hellraid, you can also buy from the Hellraid shop and use it in Haran, just running around. And it's goddamn amazing to use. Oh my god. But yeah, that will be it for this episode. That will be it for Dying Light 1 for right now, I think. If there will be any more updates, news, uh, dockets, anything like that, I will try to give you information about that. But for right now, it seems like that's the end. It's not the end of Dying Light, don't get me wrong. It's not goodbye. Because there is still amazing community in this game. There is still a, a lot of stuff to do in this game. But it is just the end of the updates for Dying Light 1. After seven years, the time has come. So yeah, not goodbye, but just the end of uh, the end of updates. That will be it for this game, for this episode. Right now, I will be ending this episode right here. So if you like this one, give it a like and tips, tricks, ideas, anything like that, give me a comment. And if you like this more code like that, then please subscribe. That will be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. And of course, see you in the next one. Bye bye.